Now let's look and see how we can combine capacitors together. Specifically, let's look at series parallel combinations of capacitors. Now we saw before how we could take a series and parallel combinations of resistors and then distill those down to a single resistor. So we know that works. Does it also work for capacitors? Well, yes, it does. We can reduce a network of capacitors to a single capacitor, but does it work the same way as resistors? Let's do the math and find out. Let's first consider capacitors in parallel. So in this case, let's assume I've got a series of capacitors that are all connected together in parallel. So given n capacitors in parallel, I'll draw that out like so. And I don't know how many capacitors I've got, but I'll just assume we've got anywhere from C1, C2, C3, all the way to C sub n. So n capacitors in parallel, and what I want to know is this. What is the equivalent value of all those capacitors connected in parallel? What can I replace those with? What a single equivalent value? Well, let's look at this. Obviously, since all of these capacitors are connected in parallel, they all have to have the same voltage across them. But they're going to have different currents because they can have different values of capacitance. So I'll assume they've got currents I1, I2, I3, all the way to I sub n. So I assume that one current flows in to this network. Obviously by KCL, this current must be equal to the sum of the other currents. So by KCL, this must be true. All the currents must add. Furthermore, all the capacitors have the same voltage. And if they have the same voltage across them, they also have the same derivative of voltage across them. So the time derivative must also be the same for all those voltages. And so therefore I can go and I can rewrite this and say that I is equal to C1 times dV dt plus C2 dV dt plus C3 dV dt all the way to C sub n times dV dt. And now I can factor out the dV dt and I will be equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3 all the way to C sub n times dV dt. So looking at this, I want to replace this network of capacitors with a single capacitor. So I want to replace them with an equivalent capacitor with the same voltage and the same current. And for this one, I is equal to C equivalent to VDT. So I want this network to equal that network. Well, clearly for that to happen, this must equal this. And therefore, the equivalent capacitance must just be equal to the sum of the individual capacitances. In other words, capacitors in parallel add.
But notice they add like resistors do in series. So not quite the same behavior in terms of how they combine, but a familiar equation, just not one we saw with parallel resistors, but with, seri with resistors in series. Okay, what about capacitors in series? Let's look at that. So for capacitors in series, I'm once again going to assume I've got n different capacitors. So I've got C1, C2, C3, all the way to C sub n. Now in this case, I'm going to have a voltage across all of those capacitors connected together in series. However, each individual capacitor will have its own individual voltage. And in this case, by KVL, V must be equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 all to get all the way to plus V sub N by KVL. But we also note that the current I flowing into the first capacitor must be equal to the current I flowing through every one of the capacitors. Same I. So I've got the same current since they're all connected together in series, which means also I have the same integral of current for each capacitor. So given this, I can now use the relationship for voltage in terms of current. Therefore, V is equal to 1 over C, integral from T naught to T of I tau D tau plus V1 T0. So the integral plus the initial condition for the first capacitor plus 1 over C, integral T naught to T of I tau D tau plus the initial condition for the second capacitor, and I should actually add this is 1 over C1 and 1 over C2. And so on to 1 over C sub n integral from T naught to T of I tau D tau plus V sub n, the initial condition of the nth capacitor. Now I've got the same integral terms in each one, and so I can factor all of these together. And what I'm going to get is that V is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 all the way to 1 over C sub n times the integral of T naught to T of I tau D tau. I can also group together all of the initial conditions plus V1 T naught plus V2 T naught plus V3 T naught all the way to V sub n T naught. Now looking at this, all of these initial conditions combined together must be equal to the initial condition for this voltage across the entire array. 
So really all of these must be equal to the voltage T at time T naught. And so if I want to replace this network with a single capacitor C equivalent and I've got a voltage across it and a current flowing through it, then clearly what I must have is that V must be equal to 1 over C equivalent times integral from T naught to T of I tau D tau plus V at time T naught. Well, once again, I want this equivalent capacitor to equal that array. And for that to happen, clearly this must be equal to that. So now we see that we've already equated together the initial conditions and so therefore what we get is this. Therefore 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 all the way to 1 over C sub n or taking the inverse C equivalent is equal to 1 over the sum of the inverses. And so this is how we combine capacitors in parallel and we note that they combine capacitors in parallel combine, or pardon me, I should say capacitors in series combine like resistors in parallel. And so we find that we can certainly combine series and parallel capacitor structures together, but the rules are opposite resistors. We use the series equation form for resistors for capacitors in parallel and the parallel resistor form for, for uh, pardon me, parallel resistor form for capacitors in series. So they're kind of opposite to each other. So now that we understand this, let's do a simple example. What if we have this? to find the equivalent capacitance across these two terminals. So you saw something very similar to this when we did resistor networks. Okay, same thing as before. We look for either a series or a parallel simplification that we can do in the circuit. And clearly those two capacitors are in parallel, except in this case we're going to add these together since they're in parallel. And 1 plus 3 microfarads is equal to 4 microfarads. So in this case I'm just going to replace those two capacitors in parallel with a single capacitor of a value 4 microfarads. And now these two are in series and so in this case CEQ must be equal to 1 over 1 over 4 microfarads plus 1 over 4 microfarads is equal to 2 microfarads. And I replace this and I have a single 2 microfarad capacitor for my equivalent capacitance. And there's my result. So the same kind of step-by-step -step simplification but the types of equations are flipped around relative to resistors. All right.
So this gives us the background on capacitors, introduction to the way they behave. Next, let's look at inductors. And as I mentioned before, capacitors and inductors, the forms of the equations that describe them are mathematical duals of each other. So what you're going to see is a lot of the same math you've already seen before, except you're going to see the voltages and the current terms flipped around in the equations. But other than that, you're going to see equations that look very, very familiar. And we'll look at that next time.